Hi, my name is Alma Chacon, and I'm the executive director of CAFE, the community for the advancement of family education. We got a group of us together and we thought, how are we going to support our families during this time of COVID? Uh, because we had families coming in requesting assistance. And then we saw the need for uh, providing information to families in our community. So we got together and we said, well, uh, one of the things that we brainstormed was starting uh, a live streaming using Facebook and Zoom. And so uh, through this grant from the North Central Washington Community Foundation, we were able to uh, plan this program and implement it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. We were able to get materials together to uh, support the community, to provide information. Uh, we bought some posters that we put around town and uh, we're focusing on our program where we invite guests to come in uh, to our lovely studio <laughs> and uh, I'll provide a stipend for our, um, we have a, a coordinator, social media uh, coordinator and our program coordinator who is uh, Lisbeth Rivera and Tonacint Lachacon who does social media. And uh, so I think what it has allowed us to do is really to provide information to our community. And uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Mondays, uh, Dr. Chacon provides a word of wisdom or un buen consejo, which is very cultural in the Latin community. And then on Wednesdays, we bring in a special guest and uh, they provide information. Like tonight's guest is uh, Dr. Mabel Podel and she'll be joining us tonight. And then Friday, uh, we're focusing on the medical field this, this week, so Friday we'll have another guest. And we have questions and answers with our guests where uh, the community can ask questions and our specialists can provide some responses. Well, un buen consejo means uh, that um, it is a um, advice for the wise, <laughs> okay, simply put. Okay, and um, it, uh, in the community, in our community, um, it truly makes sense because uh, well, many of our, of our elders are always uh, telling stories uh, or they're giving advice um, to individuals and um, usually we gather in the evening um, and it's just, this is why un buen consejo, you know, it's, it came about. Because it's it's uh, something that's very cultural, and, and everybody can truly uh, connect with, uh, with people gathering, it's, it's, you know, family gathering, and telling their stories, and also giving advice. That's where it came from. Uh, gosh, many, many generations, which is really beautiful. Um, I think it's had a great impact. Uh, we have a lot of people that come by, and well, they were coming by before asking questions. We still get them coming by every day, but uh, people know about the program, so they they join us. Uh, we have uh, we have people that join us not only from Winneachi, North Central Washington, but we we have people from Mexico, uh, California, Texas, and so it really has a broad reach. We've been really pleased with that. Um, I think that because COVID is going around internationally. Um, this is one way where we can reach more people. So that has been a very uh, positive. Um, as far as uh, viewers, uh, we get some regulars that come on, and then we also get uh, people that share, and then people that watch it after the actual programming. And so I would say maybe an average of 200 to 400 uh, uh, views. So we feel that it's been very successful. Well, yeah, first of all, um, we, we, I focus on what is cultural, because the, the intent is to truly uh, connect with individuals. And we do this through cultural sayings. Uh, for example, uh, in, in, in Espanol, in Spanish we say, uh, el camarón que se duerme se la lleva a la corriente. Okay? In English is, if you, if you uh, uh, what would that be, uh, gosh, uh, um, if um, if you sleep 
you lose. If you snooze, you lose. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Okay. So you know, it's uh, it's basically the same thing. Only is from uh, coming from in the language is very cultural. Yeah. And and so that's really the um, the intent is is not only to provide uh, information, but also to do it in a cultural way. Uh, with uh, with uh, uh, sayings, I can, we, I can truly communicate because they know they've heard of all those sayings in uh, in in wherever they came from, yeah. and so this is the one of the reasons that uh, that we combine the, the, our cultural uh, sayings with uh, what is occurring right now in our world. So our focus has been on uh, community access to education and information. And so this fits right in line. I think that our immigrant community, especially because of the language, uh, often doesn't receive the information that they need. Um, and so this is one way where we can provide information. Uh, and I, uh, it's just, it's timely because of COVID. Uh, they really need that information because our uh, Latino community are the ones that were most impacted by COVID. And we find that many of them um, still don't know the symptoms, don't know what they can be doing to, to prevent. And so this is one way that we can share information with them. Well, as, as you know, uh, that everything really is about time and about money. Without, without funding, uh, it, it would be extremely difficult to do this without funding. Um, what we do, you know, we have, and we have gone beyond, okay, uh, uh, with the use of, the, of, those, of those funds. But those funds truly gives us the opportunity uh, to, to be a part of the, more so of the community, uh, to provide information to the community. And, and if without those funds, it would truly would be impossible. You know, we just don't have the resources. You know, we are a nonprofit. Um, and our, our, our funding has always been limited until now. Now we do have the opportunity then to be as flexible, to be creative as, as we can be. Okay? And that's because of the funding. If without, without that funding, it would be extremely difficult to do it. We, you know, it to do it, we probably could, but it, it would be, gosh, an, an, ex, an, an incredible effort. So we're really very thankful of the, of the funding because it, it has given us the opportunity then you know, to be to be much, very much involved and connected with the community through un, El Buen Consejo. I just want to say that I'm very happy, we are happy here at CAFE, that uh, North Central Washington Community Foundation is here, uh, local, and supports our community in so many ways, education, outdoors, uh, uh, but this is the first time that we've applied through the Community Foundation and uh, we were granted the money to, to start this program. So uh, I, I just wanna say that I'm very happy that we have such a helpful community and I'm glad that uh, we are able to do this for our community. So that's about it. That's uh, it. Yeah, just wanna invite people to, to tune in on Mondays, Wednesdays and Friday nights at seven o'clock and um, get a little information and some updates. We provide updates every night and so and then we love having the experts here because they know more than we do. So, and Dr. Mabel is uh, gracious and joins us whenever she can. So. Oh gosh, yes. And you know what's what's fascinating? Uh, and we're surprised. We're not only listening or, or hearing from people from this area, but we're hearing from Seattle, from uh, Oregon, from California, even Mexico. People are tuning in to un buen consejo. <laughs> we, we weren't expecting that, you know, and, and they always, you know, they give me the thumb up, you know, say, hey, you know, we like those, uh, those dichos, uh, those sayings, because uh, they truly make sense, and, and they're connected to, to whatever is happening here in our world. Uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's truly, it's been a surprise to us that we have so many people listening from, uh, not, not only from Washington, but from <laughs> well, Mexico, Arizona. We're really thankful and, and grateful, uh, and uh, you know, for the, for this, because I truly see this as as a partnership with uh, with the funding sources. Um, you know, that has been missing uh, in in the past. Uh, we we really hadn't, you know, we didn't have this this partnership uh, like we have now. 
um, and and that is you know that says a lot uh, you know from uh, you know, uh, funding sources from Seattle, not only from Seattle but also from here, um, and and that's a blessing. I mean that's truly a blessing. That was uh, that's truly unexpected. So my name is Jenny Ulrich. I'm the volunteer and outreach coordinator here at Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Um, this year we received three thousand dollars from the Helping Hands grant. And what that allowed us to do is to keep our food assistance program running. The last Saturday of every month we hand out, um, this month we handed out actually approximately 2,800 pounds of cat and dog food. Uh, it happens the last Saturday of every month. It's income qualified and so it helps people that, that need a little extra assistance um, that month. Um, our ultimate goal is keeping owners and their pets together. And so being able to provide food for their animals for that month is something that takes a little bit of the burden off. Um, we saw an increase in numbers this summer. So we had started with about 50 as our, been our average number of people showing up. Um, this last month we helped 73 people. We didn't have to turn anyone away because we were able to get enough food to hand back out. Um, and that was bags from 15 to 55 pound bags that we were able to use and hand out and people could get a bag of dog food and a bag of cat food. Um, we're anticipating the need to keep growing through the winter and because of the Helping Hands grant, we actually feel pretty confident we'll be able to serve this community um, well enough and not turn anyone away. Oftentimes people actually care for their pets before themselves too. So it eases that burden, they are able to get a bag of food, they don't have to worry about how they're going to feed their pet that month, or if they're going to have to surrender the animal that they love. And during these hard times, I kind of think that, that being with their animal is pretty therapeutic. So it just eases that burden for them for the month um, to know that, that their animal is fed and they can take care of themselves now with that extra little bit of money that they may have. I don't know if due to COVID if they've had to surrender, but we do see owner surrenders and, and oftentimes it's because people can't afford either the medical or the basic care for their animals. So um, that's what this food assistance does. It at least offers food. Oftentimes we have bowls, um, dog leashes, collars, crates, um, just ways we can possibly assist with them being able to keep their animals. So I would like to say we're incredibly grateful here at the shelter. Um, this is a program that's pretty important to us. It serves our mission at the shelter, again, to keep owners and their animals together. And in the past, we've struggled at times not having quite as much food as we would like to have. Um, but because of this grant and the hard times that people are having in the community, we feel like we've been adequately able to serve this community because of the, the or gracious donors that made that happen. Um, we're also serving communities like Upper Valley Men and in Leavenworth, as well as Lake Chelan Valley Food Bank. Um, so the food that's left over from our food bank goes out to those guys at the end of the month, then we're able to restock. They can actually look us up online at uh, WenatcheeValleyHumane.org. We have, we're working on a new website, but our old one's still in existence. And um, it lists all our programs that we have available. We have low cost spay neuter, we have our food assistance, we have a TNR program, um, we have a new clinic being built. And so hopefully there's more exciting stuff to, to come with that. But checking out our website, also for our adoptable pets, um, as soon as they're available, they are on our website. I was born and raised in Wenatchee, but I left for 50 years to pursue um, college and grad school in my life, essentially. And I moved back five years ago and um, I knew about the Community Foundation because my parents had been involved with it from its earliest um, inception, but I didn't really ha ex I hadn't experienced the Community Foundation as, as an impact in our community until I moved back and then quickly discovered it serves and supports almost every sector of the city, you know, from seniors to students, from, you know, scholarships, food security, um, nonprofits, arts organizations. So for me, it seemed like a very kind of easy one-stop place to um, support the community. And especially since I wasn't yet familiar with, uh, you know, every detail of the community, I was new, really essentially new to the community again. And then during the pandemic quarantine, I was, feeling kind of helpless and um, as far as not being able to do something, I felt grateful for my own, you know, house and food and um, 
ability to sustain myself, but as the quarantine teen time extended, I, I did see a note about helping hands and that uh, the Community Foundation was really stepping in to provide a safety net for so many organizations and such a wide breadth of um, groups. So I didn't even hesitate. It made me feel better to support them that I was doing something. I wasn't out in the field because I needed to quarantine myself. But the fact that the Community Foundation is so well coordinated and they collaborate so well with every, as I said, aspect of our community, I could trust them with my money to make it um, directly impact in a positive way those who needed help during this really critical time that no one ever could have predicted. The Community Foundation is very well run, it's efficient, it has its um, finger on the pulse of our community, I think. It's approachable. I think, I think uh, everyone feels like they have a chance to get support from the Community Foundation, every organization. Um, so yes, it, they make it very easy to, um, for me, just as an individual, to help in some way. Carol and I are very strong supporters of Helping Hands and the Foundation because we believe very strongly that giving back to our community is an obligation that we have to live in a great community. And when we give back, we lift others up, but importantly, we lift our own spirits up. And the Helping Hands program really helps our community to be a better community, and it sets an example for all of us, I think, that great communities are about giving, caring, and the act of kindness. Carol and I have a lot of opportunities to give, but we uh, have selected the Community Foundation because of their sense of stewardship. And as Carol and I look at their programs, they are giving to a wide variety of areas, schools, the environment, uh, business community, uh, families. And uh, for that reason, we really want to be a contributor uh, because of that stewardship. Carol and I believe that uh, for those of us who have been given much, much is expected. And we are very, very happy to give to the foundation for their stewardship of our community.